here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite walking carpet's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Hot Toys Force Awakens Chewbacca. A little bit of controversy surrounding this release, and I'm anxious to talk about them and talk about that controversy as well as a few other things, but you know we had to get through first a tap dancing routine. Kidding. Accessories. So he comes with a display stage. It matches the Finn one with the resistance symbol in it. Star Wars Chewbacca. And then this is the Chewbacca that came with the Han Solo. Uh, so it has this piece. I'm not sure if this piece comes with the regular release or not. Um, but it's cut out this way so you can put it any which way you please if you intend on using it. This has uh, some shading. It's like a subtle grayish blue shading. It's done really well, honestly. But uh, I won't be using it, but you have that option. What I will be using is this piece, which if you take this off, and I kept it on because I just didn't want the snow to cause any potential issues. And then you can insert that into there. And then you use these, like you use all Hot Toys uh, prongs to kind of go underneath the crotch to display them. So he comes with a few hands. He has the two that he has on him, which were relaxed hands. Then he has this, which is for holding the detonators, or the bombs, rather. And then he has this for holding his crossbow. Um, there is, like, so you can see where the hair was attached in some places, like, if you're really looking for it, which is a little obnoxious, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. We'll talk about the detailings when we actually go through the figure. With this hand, which is for holding the underside of the crossbow, and then we have this hand, which is for holding the detonator for the bombs. He comes with three bombs and the detonator. Uh, they're a nice, like, metallic finished plastic. They have paint throughout uh, on the outside, and then these middle, the inside bits are all painted. And then the silver is painted, and this little detailing is on there is painted as well. He comes with three of those. They're the same ones we saw with Finn. And then he comes with the detonator, which has a, a silver finish and has a black wash on it, as well as that red metallic ring painted on it as well. And he holds those just fine. Uh, the bomb is actually held surprisingly well. The detonator is a bit of a bear to get in there, but you can do it, and you can probably push it down a little bit further. It's just not that big of a deal to me. It's a, it's a little bit cumbersome with the hair inside the hand and everything to kind of squeeze it in there, so to speak, but it is definitely possible. comes with this signature crossbow. Uh, it has this little translucent piece here with the red underneath. It almost seems like that should be battery operated somehow, but I don't see a place to put batteries or anything, but whatevs. And then it has this uh, soft goods strap, which does look good scale wise, and then the buckle is on there. It's not adjustable, but it's on there. And then the clips, which also uh, I wouldn't try to operate because they're just molded. <clears throat> you can get them on and off if you squeeze these small uh, hooks through, but you know, for what? Why would you want to do that? It has this metallic paint kind of finish to it as well, as well as dry brushing throughout of like a, almost like a, a, a silver, a silverish brown. There's almost like a brown and a silver. Hard to say. Looks good either way. Has this thin piece of plastic here for the crossbow and then a uh, heavy dry brushing here on the front end. So really uh, great looking. He does hold it just fine. It is a bit of a bear to get in his hand. Uh, it all, Chewbacca's crossbow, because of this bit here, is always a bit of a bear to get in his hand. Uh, I, I suggest angling it in at this direction and then turning it once you have it in, and it should go fairly well. comes with two replacement wrist joints, as you can see here. I'm not going to open up the tape or anything, but they're ball hinges, and uh, they have pegs on both sides, so they swivel at both sides as well. He has his arm bandage for when he gets injured. It's Velcro. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of layered. It's not layered, it's just the way that it's folded where it makes it look layered. Uh, it's, it's it's a smart way to do it. Like, the stitching is folded up a bit and then uh, to give it that, that sort of extra depth. But it does look good. And in order to put that on, what I advise doing is grabbing a couple strands of hair just in, in, in you know, random places and kind of pulling them out and then placing the bandage on the arm wrapping it around and then velcroing it down and what that will do I'm going to be looking at what I'm doing here because this is the problem is that the hair starts to stick to the velcro piece um, but what that will do is it allows the hair some of the hair strands to sit over top of the bandage and I think it just gives it a more kind of realistic and believable uh, feel and then of course he has his uh, bandolier. The 
leather look looks great. They do a great job with a, a creating a leathery look. Uh, it has the, the single piece here and then this extra piece sewn on top. The Every one of the straps is two pieces and then the actual cases of these things, which we never really know what they are. I'd like to see that in one movie, FYI to everybody. Um, they're all like a silver, like a dark gunmetal metallic with a uh, that same sort of brownish, silverish uh, dry brushing on top and then these two uh, gold studs inside. The, this does not open. It would have been nice to put the bombs in there, but it does not open. And all of these are just sort of sitting in there. So that's a little obnoxious because you'll probably have to, like once you get them posed, you have to go and adjust them all so they, they look good to you. But uh, they're all sculpted. There's a couple of different types of sculpts and they're just sort of scattered throughout. And uh, it, it looks great. And of course the bandolier is no problem to get on them. Just open the arm up and go up and over. And then that starts to feel much more like a Chewbacca. So let's talk about the face and we'll show the screen comparison. It was hard to get like a straight on shot of his face, but this will have to do for now. I think they did a pretty good job. And this picture of him uh, that you're seeing from the film is like an upward shot. But I think like he does have like a bit more of an aged look uh, when you're looking straight on at him. And I think they did capture it well. You still get the little glisten from the eyes. Nose looks appropriate. The mouth and, and lips, which is kind of the more difficult part, I feel like, to get right on Chewbacca look really good to me. The hair seems to like, you know, bloom out a bit. You know, because it's such a light, it's the same weight as the hair in the movie, which is the problem with these types of figures. But I don't think it looks hateful. Now, there's been some controversy surrounding this because some people's does not look this good. There's actually a petition you can sign, apparently, if your Chewbacca looks crazy and you want to have them send a replacement to you. And I'll tell you, if your Chewbacca looks anything like this, then I would definitely recommend a replacement. I, uh... I can tell you in hand that mine looks nothing like this, thank God. Uh, but if yours does look like this, there is a petition you can sign through change.org for the Hot Toys Chewy recall. And uh, you can have them sort of uh, tear so you can take action. You know, so we live in a petition world, but you can do this. And if, if you have this uh, this issue, I, I strongly advise at the very least contacting your supplier, or your distributor and, and saying that your Chewbacca looks crazy. I can only speak for the one that I have. And it looks, thank the Lord, it looks nothing like this one. And there he is next to his movie counterpart. It was hard once again to find a picture. Maybe I found a better one since I've done this, but I'm looking at a picture with him and Han Solo together. Like I said, I think that they nailed the colors, like the, the darker shoulders and the darker thighs and the, the much brighter brown that's coming through. I think that, that works really well. The bright around the eyebrows and the mouth. and, and the, my, my only issue, and you can't really see it, at least in the picture that I'm looking at, but I've looked at other ones, of course, is that, you know, obviously that the, the hair doesn't have the weight. We've already talked about that. And that the bandolier doesn't have the weight either. But I think overall... This is probably one of the most impressive, uh, in terms of accuracy, um, kind of overall pieces display-wise that I've seen from Hot Toys. And it's probably due to lack of clothing and how the clothing kind of sits on the figure. I think, I think that overall, this one really works well. So we're going to talk about uh, kind of the detailings and stuff of the figure, which isn't much to talk about this go-round. And then we're going to go through the articulation. I think that's the way that I'm going to do uh, one six scale figures from now on. So we have pretty much um, a fair amount of detail in the eyes, nose, and mouth, uh, the teeth and such. The mouth does articulate a bit. Uh, the teeth are all painted. The fangs are nice and sharp and small. Also, the tongue is painted. The lips are all painted. And uh, the lips are even shaded. Looks like the tongue is as well. Uh, we have the eyes, which don't look as blue to me as they should, uh, but it's not terrible either. It's just um, they do kind of get lost in those dark sockets. Uh, the hair, I think they did a really good job with in terms of the overall coloring of it and, and length of it, which is what matters. The problem is, is once again, it's the weight. Uh, it's duplicating the weight to make it look like it has the same sort of weight that it has in the films. And I don't think it does a great job of that. But I think the uses of brown, I feel like this is a bit lighter than the, uh, 
Star Wars New Hope Chewbacca, which I will compare it to. Um, and I think it overall, it looks good. The hair itself can be a bit unwieldy and you sort of have to kind of sort them out every once in a while, uh, which is a bit obnoxious, but it's not the worst thing in the world. But there's all different tones of the of the of the hair color, and the strands of hair themselves do uh, change tone from time to time when when they start to fade. We have at least three that I can see, maybe four shades of brown, as well as the black. And uh, overall, it looks good. He looks a little matty in the back. It's from sitting in the in the you know the case or the the packaging for the time that he was in there. Um, you know what, Hot Toys, I, I jokingly, uh, you know, and, and there's always a bit of truth in jokes, right? Like, I, I jokingly call them dolls because, you know, you can dress them up in little outfits and, you know, they're they're large and they, a lot of them have real hair and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, 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 you know, I, I think as I'm getting more and more of them, I'm not sure I see them as dolls anymore. What? Just brushing my Chewbacca's hair. Okay, they're definitely still dolls. Um, the hands, you do have the fingers that kind of, you know, come out of the fur, which is good. The fingers are all sculpted really well. They have like a black, uh, glossy paint on the fingernails. Comes across really well. Same kind of thing for the feet, which I don't think I've ever seen before or really noticed or taken a, you know, a really hard look at. Uh, but they do, they are all sculpted with the detail of skin wrinkles and so forth. And then this, uh, so it's not the same sort of glossy paint, but it is a difference in paint, at least in the way it's applied to the toenails themselves. So uh, overall, I don't have any real issues other than uh, their inability to kind of duplicate the weight of the hair and how the hair sits um, on Chewbacca in the films versus how it will sit on a one six scale figure. Articulation wise, like I said, the mouth does have a little bit of a hinge to it. You can close it up and lower it down just the slightest bit. Um, it's very, very subtle, but it is there. The head and neck are on a double ball peg. It feels like yes. So a great range there all the way down to there. Up to there, of course, the swivel, the confused dog look, which actually makes sense and so forth. So that all works well. Shoulders, you know, it's hard to tell, right? But it feels like they're on a, a a disc hinge connected to a ball joint inside the torso. So you get a, a, a swivel. It's a really tight joint. And I'm having trouble even moving mine. Uh, so be careful. Uh, I would use caution. If it doesn't go, I would use a hot air gun or something like that in order to get it to go. Bicep swivel is there. Double jointed elbow. Great range. Wrists, we already talked about the articulation from the peg. All that stuff works fine. Same for the other side. Feels like a double ball peg from the torso or the chest into the abdomen. And you can get a... Uh, it's like he's wearing a suit, right? And then on top of the suit, all the hair is plugged in. So you can feel the suit kind of moving over top of the buck while you're manipulating the figure. And then it feels like there's one in the abdomen is the abdomen to the pelvis as well, but I'm not getting anything out of it. So articulation in that regard is very limited. The hips are on what feels like ball pegs to me. Um, once again, articulation is relatively limited. You're getting out to there, forward to about there. Um, yeah, double jointed knee, great range there. And then the ankles are on. Uh, hmm, I can't really tell. It moves like a ball peg, um, but it might just be a hinge. So you get a tilt up. Ah, uh, yeah, it's definitely a hinge. It's like a ratcheted hinge and a tilt down, but I'm not getting any real significant rocker out of it. So. Uh, as we've kind of, or at least as I, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not the person that thinks hot toys are the greatest thing that ever, you know, walked the face of the planet or were created on the face of the planet. Um, I'm a person that kind of thinks that they're okay, and I think that uh, for my purposes they serve them fine. But as we, I've kind of come to expect, uh, articulation is extremely limited, extremely limited, and um, so you know, you're not going to be getting the the, the dynamic. Why did I stutter over that? Why did I have such an issue with that? 
you're not going to be able to get the super dynamic poses out of this fella. And I haven't really seen um, one work that way. I think the, the best one I've seen in regard to articulation has been the uh, Deadpool, the movie Deadpool. That one worked pretty well. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's limited. Elbows and, and knees and wrists work really well. The head works really well. The rest of it is, is going to be a bear for you. And there he is with the Han Solo. And there's just something about the two of them together. It's for me. I don't know what it is. But I'm a sucker for it. And I think it looks great. So there he is with the new Hope Chewbacca. Uh, from Hot Toys. And like I just think it blows the new Hope one out of the water. Like the new Hope one looks really bad to me. When I'm looking at it right now, like next to this other one, like it just it looks like more like I got a, like Planet of the Apes kind of swag than it does like a, a Chewbacca look. You know, I, I definitely think there's been a huge improvement here. Final thoughts wise for the negatives, the hair is a bit cumbersome. You know, it, it looks good. That's the positive of it. Like it's one of the better hair pieces I've seen from a, a one six scale figure. But you know, you got to sort it. You got to constantly sort it. You got to constantly adjust it. You got to make sure it doesn't get all staticky and make sure that he's all groomed and well kept. You know, it, it's ultimately I think worth it. But it is something worth mentioning. Articulation sucks. You know, mainly due to the shoulders and the hips and a little bit of the feet. But I don't think most people use these figures for dynamic poses, so it probably won't bother most of you. But it is worth noting. You know, the, the problem that I keep running into with Hot Toys, and don't get me wrong, I'm in. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in. I, I, I'm i going to do these Star Wars heroes. I've got them all planned out in my head as how they're going to go on my shelves and how it's going to look in the end. And I think it's going to ultimately be worth it. But the one thing that does still tickle the back of my mind, the back of my conscience is, is this worth the cost? You know, I think that I, it's really hard for me to justify it. You know, I, I the cost is an issue for me. And I think this is like a hundred dollars. I think they're all like a hundred dollars more than I would expect to pay for something like this. Uh, but it is the going cost of these types of figures. So I have to take that into account. And ultimately, I think it's worth it. But, you know, it does it does constantly pick at the back of my head. Now, I'm sure a lot went into this in terms of, you know, plugging all those hairs into that kind of oversuit that he's wearing and everything. Like, I'm sure a lot goes into it. I get it. Everything, the accessories are decked out, all that kind of stuff. So I get it. It's just it is a tough pill to swallow. It's a jagged little pill to swallow. But luckily, the faults of this figure are very few, and that is, you know, just having to deal with the headache that is the hair and the limited articulation in the hips and shoulders. Mm -hmm. Positives-wise, though, I think the sculpt is good. I think that the accessories are all logical. They all work well. I will say that a couple things that I've noticed is that the hands have swapped much easier than I've ever noticed in the past. Uh, you do have to pull back the hair a little bit and get that hand out, but I didn't have the peg come with it, like the whole assembly of the articulation hardware come with it, so that's nice. The leather materials look great. The metal materials look great. I think that's where they shine. And luckily, this guy is made up most of both, with the only exception being the hair. And I think overall, the hair works really well. Doesn't have the weight, which we talked about, but I think overall, it really does a good job of capturing it. So yeah, I definitely recommend him. If, if you're a Hot Toys collector or a 1-6 scale collector or a fan of Chewbacca and Han Solo, I can't recommend the set yet because we haven't looked at Han Solo. We'll be looking at him very soon, but I can at least recommend him individually and maybe Han Solo as well. That review will be coming soon. But I think most of the stuff that you want to work, especially for me, I'm using these guys as basically statues. I'm, I'm, I don't want them in dynamic poses. I, the the one six scale statue market has basically crashed due to companies like Hot Toys. So... I want them to stand in as statues, and for my purposes, this guy is going to work like a champ. Great presence, great likeness. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.